Welcome back to here with Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about self-help books and why they continue to capture the imagination of millions despite not providing information we haven't heard countless times beforehand. I believe this speaks to why society doesn't change dramatically, whether it's in the market realm, the political realm, and other aspects, because people want to hear a certain message. And when you start suggesting to them, okay, actionable solutions, this is where the grunt work comes in, they'll sort of shy away and fall off the wayside. And that's what we'll be discussing, primarily focused on these books and what they're putting forward. So let's begin with a 10 times rule. A year, year and a half ago, someone said, you got to come here, hear Grant Cardone, he's really amazing. And I didn't end up going, but I picked up this book, The 10 Times Rule. And I was just struck as I began reading it. Who can muster the willpower to wade through this dogmatic claptrap? This is supposed to be a person who has 5,000 odd retail properties, self-made individual, and the best you can come up with is contrived, generic, motivational uh, slogans from some random you know, internet blog or quotes depository. I mean, it's astonishing. You would think someone with this expertise would tell you, here's how you get a loan, here's appropriate branding, but no, it's all a bunch of like really hyper bland stuff you could pick up anywhere. And now I do agree with something he says at the beginning, the average person reads less than one book a year. And it makes sense because this is typically what you'll see them reading. You know, there's coworkers, family members who they don't read much. And um, whether it's reading or listening to podcasts, just in general, being curious about stuff, they've always got that one self-help book that they're reading for the entire year. Or and then the next year, they've got a different one. You're saying, is anything, you know, substantially changing in your life? Because it doesn't appear to be the case financially, socially. Maybe it's all internalized. We just don't get it. But nevertheless, you have to pay attention. And so I wrote down some of this stuff in the 10 times rule because I was just cracking up. At the end, he has this long list of how you're supposed to uh, operate. You have to have a can-do attitude. Believe I will figure it out. Focus on opportunity. Love challenges. Seek to solve problems. Re uh, persist until successful. Take risks. Be unreasonable. Be dangerous. Create wealth. Readily take action. I mean, really? This is what you have to offer? A bunch of, you know, some pep talk, essentially. That's what a lot of people appear to want, a pep talk. And we'll get into it just a bit here. Another one. This was hyped up by the manuscript to no end. I started reading it and I was going, obviously a text which was rapidly paced together. Not much flow. He had a few interesting uh, commentaries on uh, posture and self-talk, although I think this was all grabbed from Tony Robbins. But the book itself, it says on the cover, um, make more money. And then you go to a section on finance, and it's basically dollar cost average in low fee index funds. Really? Like this is the great mindset idea that you're providing, which is to do what almost every financial advisor will tell you to do if they're worth their salt, you know, and maybe that seems like a nitpick, but I'm just saying for all the hype that goes into these books, they don't provide you with any information. You're not going to find, you know, with a, a Google search or talking to someone who's right next to you or doing absolutely nothing, like having a default setting in your 401k, this is what you'd end up with. Um, compound effect. Brief, interesting read. Uh, pretty much the same stuff. Don't buy that Starbucks every day or it's going to add up to 50 grand over so many years. Not much in the way of uh, novel, actionable information. This is one of the best sellers. You know, it's got tons of positive reviews. And you say, really? And you got others. You got your money or your life, think and grow rich, atomic habits. I'm sure maybe you could do those little exercises, fill in the blanks. Myers Brig, and it can really orient you in a positive direction. But I would really like to see a study of how many people, after reading a self help book, make any measurable change in their life. Or if it isn't just 
what I liken to those who might go to a church on Sunday and they sing, they're waving their hands in connection with the Holy Spirit or whatever you believe in. And then that's Sunday. And then on Tuesday, they're still being nasty towards their family. They're still conniving. They're still rude in the office. But for that moment, they feel like their life has fundamentally changed. They got that, you know, good mental estate. They're just, you know, on fire. And maybe that's enough. They're euphoric. But it's all there. It doesn't like start to permeate out and change fundamentally how they're operating and living, which is, I think, a little bit of a shame, to be honest with you. Uh, then we have Jordan Peterson. And this is another book. It started out kind of interesting with the lobsters. Then it just becomes a word salad. And you're like, what are you trying to communicate here? But if you take his core message, which is about you as a person fixing your own problems, you know, don't blame the world. And a lot of people say this is a oh, wow. But if you think about it, if you've grown up in a Western society, you've pretty much heard the same stuff since you were a kid in one manner or the other. So, yeah, we have the victimhood mentality now, the wokeism. But even, you know, 90s kids, early 2000s kids, you're special, everyone's special, you can do what you want, listen to your heart. That's been the mentality. Most folks, unless there are some really cynical, you know, oh, because of systemic racism or whatever, most folks, if you're a kid and you say, oh, I want to be an astronaut, they're going to say, yeah, you're going to be an astronaut, or you're going to be this, or that, or the other. That is the cultural sounding board, or I guess, uh, reflection chamber. But then you hear this message about how clean your room, fix your problems. People are like, yeah, it's great. I think it goes back to something which Michael Savage talked about, you know, at the very start of Obama's administration, where he was saying Obama was affected politically with these code words, hope, change, you know, universal this. Because it goes back to when you're a child and you're first developing a vocabulary you use specific words as these markers in your mind, and you will apply a lot, of, uh, a lot of virtue to them because that's how you kind of find your way through and begin to have a better understanding of language, which some people never do. But as a result, you kind of want to reach back and touch on that. So if someone is very good, very charismatic, and they can keep hitting those specific notes, they will get your votes, they'll get money, whatever, because that's what you want. That's what you want to remember and go back to. And Carl Jung had the concept of us wanting to become children again, which could also play a role. Or just something like this. You ever played baseball or softball? You're done with a scrimmage or the practice. Everyone wants to go home. And then the Uncle Rico character who almost went to state, he says, take a knee, kids. And he does the 20 or 30 minute spiel about how you got to work hard, you got to be motivated. And some of you maybe really love that. Others just want to go home and play video games. But if you really loved it, you're going to like these self-help books because it's going to remind you of that coach who told you you could do everything, you can, we can beat them. You know, not to say that a positive mindset is a bad thing, but again, how much of it actually translates into action or is it just mental masturbation ultimately that people are doing with all these self-help programs. Now, if it gives them, you know, if it improves their mental health, I guess we can't really criticize it. I'm just saying, I think that's the reason why. The moment you tell someone, hey, you need to make this change in life, you have to take this step, that requires work, that requires risk, that requires them to get over themselves and more than just some mental gymnastics. And a lot of people don't want to. They can still have the same job. They can still have the same lifestyle, not really change their health too much, their diets. But they can feel as though they've actually dramatically overcome, you know, everything in their existence. So again, it can explain why in our politics, a lot of people, you try to reason with them, you try to give them information. They don't want to hear it. They just want to believe what they want to believe. They want to have their narratives. And they're not interested in further education. They're not interested in the harder part, the staler part, the bland aspect. They just want to have, yeah, we're on this side, you're on that side, we're good, you're bad, or I'm doing this, you're not. 
And it is enticing, but in the long run, it's kind of destructive because nothing gets done. There's no progress. There's no advancement. We keep debating over the same nonsense because that's what people want to uh, align themselves to. And that's where they get their sense of identity or purpose. So I do have to make that point. Now, I will note one that I read recently, which definitely was a cut above, probably because I'm not terribly familiar with Eastern philosophy, so it was actually kind of novel. This one, I looked at the cover, I said, this guy's probably a douchebag, but turns out he had a lot of good information. And the monk lifestyle, you know, obviously some of it's very ascetic, but there are aspects that you could readily apply. It was more of a, okay, I could see this being part of my life and making some kind of substantial difference. So I would recommend checking that one out. It's a little bit better as far as, you know, teaching you what to do. So those are my thoughts. Uh, if there are any self-help books that really stood out to you guys that you would say are different from the ones mentioned, definitely drop them below because I'm always interested in exploring new things.